So, in a vision, I saw clothes hanging on a line, on a hang line, like they were washed and then they were hung there to dry. So what I noticed about these clothes is that all of them were very decent dresses for ladies. All of them were very decent dresses. And then in the vision, an angel told me, an angel spoke to me and then he told me, he asked me a question and then he said, do you know what we call these dresses in heaven? Do you know what we call these kinds of clothes in heaven? And then I said, I don't know. And then he said, in heaven, we call these kinds of clothes, we call them I love you dresses. Because whenever a child, whenever a child of God is wearing them, whenever a child of God is wearing such clothes, clothes that are modest and decent, then that person is caused for, for all the period that the person is wearing those clothes, that person is constantly saying, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. It's more as if the person is busy worshiping God and saying, I love you, Lord, I love you, Jesus, I love you. And then the vision ended. I was really amazed and very encouraged because Jesus wanted me to know that when you are dressing decently in order to know to honor God, when you are dressing modestly to honor God, it's just the same as if you are worshiping God. And then it reminds me of a vision that my sister Zipporah had. So she saw a lady walking in the road dressed modestly and she did that in order to honor the Lord. And then in the vision, God showed her that this person uh, dressing decently for, the, for all the period that she is dressed in order to honor God, it's just the same like she's busy worshiping, it's just the same like she's busy praying. So this vision that my sister had is very similar to the vision that the Lord gave me. And then it made me to realize one thing, that obedience is, is better than sacrifice. You know, and then what the Lord was telling me yesterday was that the kind of worship, like what it means to truly worship the, the Father in truth and in spirit, is not just about a particular song, like you just begin to sing this song and then you say, Oh Lord, I worship you, I honor you. No what God is talking about, worshipping Him in truth and in spirit. He wants us to worship Him with our lives. If you are living in obedience to Him, that, that is what true worship really is. That's what the Father is looking for. God is not concerned about, about your sacrifices. He's not concerned about you giving money to Him, giving money for ministry. God is concerned about you being in obedience to him because what does it mean to worship him in truth and in spirit it means you have to be led by the holy spirit when the holy spirit tells you to get rid of something in your life you get rid of it and then when the word of god comes to you when the word of god in the bible or or the holy spirit speaks to you and tells you god wants you to do this god wants you to take that seriously that is worshiping the father in truth and in spirit it's living a surrendered life to jesus because our lives should be a life of worship. Even when we're not in that moment of actual actual physical worship, like actual worship, like God, we worship you, we praise you. You know, your life is always worshiping God. That's the kind of worship that the Father is looking for. Jesus was saying a time is coming when people will no longer worship the Father either on this mountain or in Jerusalem when he was talking to the Samaritan woman. But the Father, is, the Father is looking for people who are going to worship Him in truth and in spirit, meaning in obedience to the Word of God and then being led by the Holy Spirit. People who, the Father is longing and He is looking for people who are going to live a life of worship where your life is completely surrendered to the will of God. That is true worship. And then what, what the Lord God is saying is that if you're living in disobedience to him and then you come to him and you offer sacrifices to him let's say you fast it doesn't matter if you fast for 40 days if you're living in in disobedience to the father you can come and then you you're going to fast for 40 days you can come and fast for 40 days god is not going to honor that he is not going to respect that like to him that doesn't even matter to him it's abominable because obedience is better than sacrifice. God would rather you obey his word. God would rather you align your life to the word of God than for you to go to go on the prayer mountain and then you fast. What I'm saying is these things are really necessary for your Christian work. They are great. They are important. It's important for you to fast. It's important for you to give. But that's not the priority 
the priority, the first thing, the basic, the primary thing God wants you to do is to surrender your life to Him. Is for you to be ready to obey the Father, to obey Him in everything. And then after this, then you can do the rest. That's what God wants. That's what it means to worship the Father in truth and in spirit. If you are living in disobedience, it doesn't matter if you sing a million songs of worship. It's so abominable to God. It's unacceptable. Let me read this verse with you when God is talking about true worship. This is one of the verses that the Lord led me to when he was telling me about this. It's from the book of Isaiah 66. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 4 and then the Bible reads, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one who I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. He who kills a bull is as if he slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering as if he offers swine's blood. He who burns incense, as if he blesses an idol, just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they didn't hear. But they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. This is a very, very, very serious verse that's talking about true and false worship about worshiping the father what is acceptable to god god was rebuking these people because you what he was saying because what they thought was oh they would live however they wanted they would live in disobedience to the father and then they would bring grain offerings they would bring booze they would bring all these things they would bring offerings they would bring incense to god and then god was saying it's so abominable what are you what do you think do you think i need a cow do you think I need your grain offerings. I created everything. I own everything. Everything that exists is mine. He owns all the money. He owns the silver and the gold. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. God owns everything. Nothing exists that he didn't create. Therefore, he is not caring about you bringing those things to him. He already owns them. He can do whatever he wants with them. He is not in need of money. He is not in need of money he doesn't want your money what god wants is your obedience that is true worship that's what god wants us to do he isn't looking for someone who's going to bring an offering or a tithe he is looking for the person who is going to lay down their lives before him and say lord do with me whatever you want the lord is saying i will regard and i will look upon that person the one who has a broken and a contract spirit and the one who trembles at my word so the kind the only kind of person god is looking for whom god is going to honor you know he is going to honor the prayers of this person is that person who has humbled themselves before the lord with a broken and a contrite heart you humble yourself before the lord and you say god i need your help help me and then you tremble at his word which means that when the lord tells you to do something you take it seriously you don't disregard it you don't esteem it lightly because when you esteem his word lightly you have esteemed god lightly god is one with his word if the lord tells you to do something and then you just disregard it it's it's actually the Lord whom you have disregarded. He is one with his word. So he is saying he is only going to honor that person who is going to tremble at his word. Meaning the person who is going to be obedient. When the Lord says something, you are so zealous to make sure that you obey. You don't want to disobey. And then you need to come with a broken and a contract spirit. And this is important because on your own, you cannot obey God. On your own, you're going to come and then you're going to continue failing. You're going to be attempting, but you're going to continue failing. God wants you to come and surrender before him. Humble yourself and say, God, I want to obey you. I want to obey your word, but I need your help. I need you to help me. I need you to teach me. I need you to make me obedient. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord. We are nothing without Him. We can never make it without Him. That is the only way we're going to truly worship the Father in truth and in spirit. It's when we surrender to His Spirit. 
because the father has promised us the holy spirit it's for every believer you need to seek the holy spirit you need to seek the baptism of the holy spirit if you still haven't received when the lord is going to fill you with his holy spirit you're going to find that even your love for sin is going to go away you hate the things that you once loved you will love the things of god i before i was born again i used to think that christianity is very boring and that's a lie that the devil has lied to so many people out there people think like oh christianity is so boring you know he is portraying this other image that is not of god yes christianity is so boring yes it is so boring if you try to just be religious you're going to find that you're going to get so bored but the holy spirit is actually so exciting it's an adventure you know a relationship with jesus that's something to look forward to it's so awesome like i don't even know how to explain it you need to have a relationship with if you don't have a relationship with jesus i just encourage you to go on your knees and ask the lord tell god lord i want to get intimate with you i want to know you i want to have a relationship with you you need to walk in the spirit you can no longer just walk by religious rules you need to have a relationship with jesus where you speak to the lord and the lord needs to speak to you so it's really important it's really exciting Christianity is not boring, it's actually the most amazing thing. When I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, when I'm moving in town and then I just, when I'm moving in town and then I just see these people just living without God, I would actually feel sorry for them. I would think like, oh, so they don't know there's such a life, they don't know there's such adventure, like with the Holy Spirit. It's such a wonderful thing to love the Lord. You know, uh, in human terms, in human terms, when you love someone, it's that person who's going to benefit, right? But when it comes to the Spirit, when you love Jesus, what I have discovered is when you love Jesus, it's you who is going to enjoy loving the Lord. You're going to feel so good about it. The Holy Spirit fills you with so much joy. I was sharing with my husband yesterday about the same, like, I'm, I'm experiencing this thing where I'm falling deeper in love with Jesus. But then what I'm discovering is that I want more of it because... It's just so great, like it's so awesome, like the more I love Jesus, the more I want to love him. Because the more I love Jesus, it's as if I'm receiving this gift, this, it's just beyond words, like words fail me, I don't know how to explain it. But it's just so wonderful because the more I love Jesus, it's me who's feeling good, I'm really enjoying it. The more I'm enjoying it, the more I'm enjoying loving the Lord. And then I'm just busy saying, God help me to love you more. I want to love you more. I'm thirsty for more of you. So we need to stay close to the Lord. Humble yourself, come to him with a broken and a contrite heart. God cares more about your obedience. Why did the Lord, why did the Lord reject Saul? Saul thought that he was going to please God if he disobeys him and then he gets the cows and brings them to, to God as if God needed those bulls, you know. God didn't need those bulls. He didn't need those sheep. He already owned them. If he wanted bulls, he would just get from wherever or he can simply create or he can get from the earth. He can, get, he can bring them to himself. God is not in need of bulls. God created us for himself. He created us. To enjoy fellowship with him he wants to fellowship with us he wants to have a very intimate relationship with us god cares about us getting close to him about us being obedient to him then he cares about our 40 days fasting then he cares about our three months fasting even if you were to fast for three months straight or if you're to fast for a year you know, it doesn't matter to the Lord if you're living in disobedience. God wants you first to obey Him and to humble yourself before Him. That is true worship. That's what God wants. And then now imagine if you're already living a life of worship, you are surrendered to God and obedient to His word. You tremble at His word. You are obedient. You have humbled yourself before God. Now imagine the power of the worship that is going to emanate. That is, imagine the power of the worship that is going to rise up from your heart when you now begin to sing songs of worship. When you begin to praise the Lord, imagine how much more acceptable that is going to be to the Father because your life is already a sweet smelling aroma before the Father constantly. And now you, that precious child of God, who is living in obedience to his word, and then you begin to worship, that is so powerful. And it's so joyous a sweet smelling aroma to the father that is what he wants that is what true worship is that is what the lord god wants 
of you and I.